great man of knowledge, wisdom, understanding, and purpose. A father figure. Having a determined idea to build a nation that would go on to teach the world. A man named Allah that took the time to share his mind with the young people that he came in contact with. Giving them the tools that would guide them on the path of righteousness and civilization. Born Clarence Edward Smith on Wednesday, February 22nd, 1928 in Danville, Virginia, during the time of Jim Crow racial segregation. He was the fifth son of Lewis and Mary Smith. He was nicknamed Put as a baby, which stuck with him throughout his childhood. Although he lived in segregation, him and his family never minded not being amongst white folks and enjoyed life amongst their own people, having been raised with a down sense of values, convictions, wisdom, and awareness. In 1946, he came to New York to join his mother and his brother who came to Harlem prior looking for employment. Once in New York, the nickname Put that he was given as a child was mistaken as Puddin, and this became his new nickname. During the same year, he met Willene Jowers, then would go on to have two sons in 1949 and 1951. He later married another woman named Dora and had more children. In 1950, he joined the United States Army and went to fight in the Korean War. He just missed being killed several times making it out of that war as a decorated soldier with a high and prestigious award for his outstanding service record. During his time in Korea, his wife Dora had joined the Nation of Islam under the leadership of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Upon his return from Korea, he joined Temple No. 7 in Harlem under Minister Malcolm X. Once in the temple, he was given the name Clarence 13X and began swiftly rising in the ranks of the Nation of Islam, going from elevator operator, then getting promoted to the position of lieutenant, teaching and training the fruit of Islam and martial arts, which he had picked up from Korea. In studying his lessons, he became very proficient in them. He developed a self-style of expressing his lessons, in which many called hypnotic, due to his speaking style and southern drawl that was unique and specific to him. He was then promoted again to student minister. It is said that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad took note of this five-year minister and wanted to meet him. During this time, there was some turmoil in the temple. And although the lessons clearly stated the black man is God of the universe and there is no mystery God, few ministers disagreed with Allah's literal interpretation of these teachings. He decided to leave the temple due to a few differences he had with the Muslims. During this same time period, Malcolm X, with his own set of differences and difficulties, also left the temple. When Allah left Temple No. 7 in 1963, a few other brothers that agreed with the reality of his teachings also left with him. He returned back to the streets of Harlem, where he would manifest and teach the youth in the streets who had not been reached or overlooked by the Muslims and other organizations of the time. The understanding that he gained from observing the lessons that taught the original man is the supreme being and there is no substance or force in the universe that does not exist within the black man, meaning that there is nothing greater than the black man. He realized that what he had learned applied to himself. He changed his name from Clarence 13X to Allah and began teaching those he came in contact with. And recognizing that most of the older folks were reluctant to change their ways, he focused on the young. Allah and his right-hand man, Justice, developed a system of mathematics as a foundation for his teachings, putting an emphasis on the order of knowledge and wisdom as opposed to wisdom knowledge that was taught in the temple. This system of supreme mathematics are 10 principles, one to nine, and a cipher, along with supreme alphabets, which are a system of principles that correspond to the 26 letters of the alphabet. Given the young tools, to see things in a mathematical way, giving order to the days of their lives, teaching the young how to live righteously and their relationship to the universe, bringing his teachings to delinquent, disenfranchised youth that society had given up on. With these principles of supreme mathematics and alphabets, Allah taught the meaning of life 
their relationship to the community as well as their relationship to the universe, giving them a sense of purpose in life. A law focused on nine young men that stood out in the Harlem neighborhood, empowering them with the knowledge of self, knowing that they would spread it to their peers. These first nine young men came to be known as the firstborn of the 5% nation. A law became known as the father because he was a father figure in a community full of broken homes, and he could see the fathers furthering the education of those amongst him. His teachings empowered and motivated these young men to teach others, and soon his knowledge spread to other areas of New York. Harlem became known as Mecca. Brooklyn became known as Medina, with his own set of firstborns, getting sparked in December of 1964. Queens became known as the Desert or the Oasis. The Bronx became known as Pelon. And places outside of New York also got names as the knowledge spread to those areas. In 1964, there was an assassination attempt on a law, with him being shot with a high-powered rifle in a basement on 127th Street. Although he was hospitalized, the attempt on his life was not fatal, and he continued to teach. A few months later, in May of 1965, He was charged with disorderly conduct after a disturbance was brought about when two police officers attempted to break up the rally he was holding. During the arraignment in court, he told the judge he didn't need a lawyer because he is a law and could represent himself. A judge in Supreme Court ordered that he be placed in psychiatric custody in Bellevue Hospital due to him proclaiming to be God or law. He continued to teach the young that came to see him while at Bellevue. They then transferred him to Madawan, separating him from his 5% until his 5% got word of where he was. And then they began traveling to visit him in Madawan. His nation continued to grow as his teaching spread throughout the state, country, and eventually the world. Those that locked him up called him crazy, yet as time passed, they granted him his own office and a telephone to call whoever he wanted in a time before cell phones. The atmosphere of the time was one of great tension and turmoil between black and white communities. However, a law taught his nation not to be pro-black or anti-white, yet to be pro-righteous and anti-devilishment, knowing that not every black man is your brother the same way not every white man is your enemy, yet also teaching that the black man is God and had a responsibility to teach all human families of the planet Earth. During this time, there was some confusion as to the difference between the 5% nation and the nation of Islam due to similarities in the names and some of the teachings. In 1967, Allah instructed his 5% to change their names from Muslim names to draw their names from the supreme mathematics and alphabets. Allah was very particular at distinguishing his nation from Muslims. He also taught the sisters that the earth is the black woman's twin in nature. Thus, the 5% women are called the earth. The black woman is symbolic to the earth in many ways. And the earth is the only planet in our solar system that is capable of reproducing life. An emphasis on teaching the babies is also a core part of the teachings of Allah and his 5%, expressing that the babies are the greatest and the future of our nation. In 1967, they released a law from Madawan and signed his name upon his release as a law, the same name they called him crazy for using. Upon his release in 1967, the 5% Nation held his first universal parliament in Mount Morris Park to welcome him home. He spoke to his growing nation at the first universal parliament, thanking and acknowledging his 5%ers for being strong and continuing to grow in his absence. The mayor of the time, John V. Lindsay took note of the great work a law was doing and decided to develop a task force dedicated to building ties with community leaders, with the law being top priority. Other politicians looked to build ties with the law as well. According to a notable 5%er named God Supreme, who was there, sometime in 1967, a law called the Universal Parliament and invited a few politicians and other community leaders to speak at this parliament. Notable figures like Mayor Lindsay 
and his assistant Barry Gaudier, a law had these politicians and community leaders speak and tell the 5% what they had to offer. The mayor gave a law the Street Academy with a 99 year lease, which opened early that summer of 1967 at 2122 7th Avenue, where it remains to this day. In addition, the mayor gave bus rides and trips to young 5%ers, as well as grants for those who completed Harlem Prep, an educational program to help young adults prepare for college. Pins of the 5% flag were printed and given out, and a host of other things that the mayor's assistant made sure was taken care of and done right. Governor Rockefeller made sure that many of those that paid their debt to society were let go from the penal system. It is said that Mayor Lindsay went into the halls of government advocating for the teachings of Allah and spoke of the great work he was doing in the community. Allah made them honorary five percenters and gave them a flag. On April 4th, 1968, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. was assassinated in Memphis, Tennessee, sending shock and grief throughout the black communities of America. Allah and his 5% have in foresight that 85% of the people will react violently without any consideration of a who, what, where, or how to execute their desire for justice. With Allah's teachings, the 5% moved through the crowds of Harlem, reinforcing peace, helping to avert a riot which would have left the community of Harlem in shambles. Allah was recognized, praised, and received media attention for his participation in maintaining order and peace. He continued to receive recognition and praise from Mayor John B. Lindsay for the outstanding job he was doing in providing motivation, educational, and vocational growth and, and with the youth of the community. On Friday, June 13, 1969, at the age of 41, a law was gunned down, shot seven times in the elevator of Martin Luther King Towers on 112th Street in Harlem. Several of his five percenters rushed down to the scene of the crime where their father was stricken. On Saturday, June 14, Mayor Lindsay and his aide, Barry Gardier, met with the guards at the street academy, expressing their sorrow and grief for what had happened to Allah. The guards spoke about the reason that they loved Allah so much and pledged to continue his work. The funeral was held on Monday afternoon at Unity Funeral Chapel on 8th Avenue and 126th Street. It was a massive event as Harlem bid farewell to the man they affectionately called Puddin. Although his physical body may have expired, his teachings live on. A period of grief permeated through the 5% nation until 1971 when a group of 5%ers put together an annual event called the Show and Prove in commemoration of Allah and his teachings. To this day, the event takes place every year during the second weekend in June to show and prove Allah lives. His legacy is in his teachings and the nation that continue to teach his teachings and elevate the lives of those that come in contact with it. It has become a global phenomenon in part due to hip hop artists that have laced their music with his teachings. Peace to Allah and his nation of five percenters for the massive contribution to our history in black. I like this synth mega, do it again.